Hey there, is today your first time here? Or maybe your first time in a while? If so, maybe you're wondering exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. Thank you, Lord. Well, welcome this morning to those of you that are here, and uh, we're believing that uh, more are coming. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we give you the praise, glory, and honor. We thank you for this morning. Lord, I just ask that you just bless this time that we can come together and worship you. And I ask, Lord, that uh, we would just not worship you in the flesh, but Lord, we would worship you in spirit and in truth. That, Lord, we worship you with freedom in our hearts and joy in our in our hearts and lord i just ask that you would just uh, come and visit us today in such a powerful and special way lord during all these uh, restrictions and mask wearing and all things that are going on lord may that be not a hindrance but may that be a sign that we need to worship you more that we need to pull down heaven more that we need to get in your presence even more lord i thank you for everything you are doing and gonna do even in this time, I give you praise, glory, and honor because we know that this is just a sign of the times. And so, Lord, we just ask that you just bless this service this morning as we worship you in freedom and liberty in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And uh, bless you and, uh, and uh, let's just worship the Lord this morning. Why don't you stand up with us this morning? This morning, may you, uh, have, may you have came with excitement and joy in your hearts this morning to uh, be in the presence of the Lord and, uh, and uh, in the presence of each other in unity. Amen? Hallelujah. Anyway, a couple of announcements this morning. Children's Church is starting this morning. Hallelujah. <laughs> ages 2 to 11. And um, ages 2 to 11, and they'll meet in the back, uh, that back room over there once we're ready. Once I do the announcements, then Joanne will... Uh, lead you in there. Amen? All right, so anyone who would like to, uh, when you're giving with your tithes and offerings, you can give by check if you got an envelope this morning, and, or you can give by ybcadmin at sastel.net. That's ybcadmin at sastel.net if you would like to give through the internet. That also works great. Thank you so much for your generous giving. It'll be a great winter because we have furnaces on this side now too. Amen? Hallelujah! So thank you so much for helping us bring the heat on in the house. It's been uh, great that uh, we had such uh, generous helpers and givers to make that possible. And uh, anyway, uh, yeah, if you'd like to give through uh, offering, that way you can do that, or, or through YVC admin at sastel.net. And, uh, and I'm going to just uh, ask the ushers to, uh, to get ready to go, and I'll pray for the offering, and then we'll... Uh, and then we'll collect that. So, Father, I just give you the praise, glory, and honor. I thank you for this morning. I thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to be able to give uh, to the kingdom and, uh, and, uh, and just uh, to be a blessing, Lord. So I thank you for pouring, uh, opening up the windows of heaven and pouring a blessing on every giver. And, and, Lord, may they be cheerful givers in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. So if you want to collect that, that would be great. While we're doing that, Tuesday night Bible studies, 7 p.m. right here. Uh, we, do, we have some worship, and then we get into our study with Dr. Ron Swanson. He's been our, our teacher online for a little bit now. It's uh, live, it's not live, well, yeah. It's recorded classes from Victory Bible College, and uh, so if you're interested in learning more, getting deep into the Word, chewing some, some real good meat, 
this would be a great opportunity for you to come and uh, join us in the Bible study. It's been very good, and we're, we're excited to continue to do that. Um, we've started a new, new class, uh, hum, hermeneutics, and uh, I think that's how you say it, right? Hermeneutics. Yeah. Anyway, so it's, it's great. It was a great study on Tuesday, and we'll be looking forward to next, this Tuesday coming up. So 7 p.m. right here, Tuesdays, and you can enjoy that. If you know anybody looking for work, uh, don't forget about Little Lambs Early Learning Center. They can uh, drop off their resume, phone, uh, email, L-E-L-C at sastel.net, or come and talk to them in person. Little uh, Serendipity Thrift Store, don't forget to help, if you can, uh, volunteer and uh, support that store. It's at 50 Broadway Street West. If you want information on it or you'd like to volunteer, you can talk to Sandra, and, uh, and she will be more than happy to uh, guide you in the direction of assisting. Amen? It sounds like this bass amp is just blurring in my ear, which is good, but... As long as it's not too loud for you. Anyway, so that's uh, that. Oh, don't forget about, there's a power conference coming up in Regina. A power conference. Uh, that's going to be the 15th of October and the 16th of October. So if you can make it to the power conference, I don't think there's a registration fee, is there? No, I don't think so. So you just show up at the, at the Regina Victory Church. That's Friday night on the 16th and Saturday night on the 15th. Am I not? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. Yeah, what am I thinking? Yeah, 15, 16. Hello. Uh, sorry. Yeah, so, yeah, so 15 and 16. There they go. 15, and then 16, and then 17. And then okay. Anyway, <laughs> so now we have our counting lesson in this morning. Don't forget to uh, go to Regina Victory for that conference. It'll be a great time. Is anybody excited about getting to a conference again? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. It's awesome to break free. Get back in with brothers and sisters in Christ and, and, uh, and just uh, worship with other brothers and sisters in Christ besides the ones that are in the house. Welcome to those of you that are visiting this morning also. And uh, all right. So, Lord, I just ask that you just bless the children. Should I invite them to come up again? Let me know you. Okay. Why don't anyone that's going to children's church, if you're, if you're two, or between 2 and 11, why don't you come and uh, we'll release you to Children's Church this morning. Does it sound okay? Or does it sound equi? Hallelujah. Amen. We should give Doug a hand for popping in once in a while and giving us a hand with our sound system. Hallelujah. He's making me sound great. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't even have to... Okay. <laughs> Are the children up here? Okay. Father, we just give you praise, glory, and honor. I thank you for my wife. I thank you for healing her body. And I thank you for uh, a children's church starting up this morning. As she leads them, Lord, may your spirit guide her and guide those children to be touched by your presence this morning in a special way. May they have a great time in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you guys as you go. Follow Joanne, and she will lead you to the victory room of children champions. Ooh, a name for the room. Hallelujah. Communion Sunday today. So, uh, you know what I was thinking, like, if, if we're filming right now, um, don't forget, if you're at home and uh, you're watching this later or whatever on YouTube, uh, don't hesitate to pull out the communion and, uh, and uh, enjoy communion, even if it's later on. Amen? You can never, uh, you're never too late for communion. You're only too late if you don't do it. Amen? So do it and uh, have a great time with that. Hallelujah. You know, I've just been uh, really pondering in this last little while about everything that's going on in the world, and I don't want to get into the politics of things, of, of, this, of, the, of what's happening, and I think we all pretty much know, I think we hear it every day on the news of all the, all the different things, but I want to know, you know, I, I was, I was, what, what, what I was really thinking about is what's happening in the church? You know, what's happening with the people in the church of Jesus Christ? You know, if any time that the church should be unified, it's now. The Bible talks all the way through about unity. Every, no, there's never a war or, or, or a, a, a time of, of, of war, a battle or whatever that's never been won without unity. Amen? I mean, no, it's important if you belong to the army of God or any kind of an army that you need to be unified. Could you imagine if an army was battling and they weren't unified? It would be a terrible thing. One would be going that way. One would be going that way. One would be, you know, 
it would just be an awful, uh, it would be an awful thing. So, so that's why in the, in the army they train and they, and they work together and they, and, and they learn their endurance and how much they can handle and how much they can take. And, uh, you know, I think that's the way we need to be in the church. We need to understand it's not about uh, necessarily wearing a mask. It's about getting together and serving the Lord. Amen? There are people that, uh, they, you know, they won't wear a mask in the church, but if they go to get groceries, they'll put a mask on. Right? What about the Lord? Why is it so difficult to just put on a mask and worship the Father so that we can become unified in saying, you know what, these need to go. Trust me, I know they need to go. Nobody wants to wear them, right? And, uh, but, but, you know, it's just, it's, it's just interesting how the church is so divided in so many different ways. I think we just need to really begin to focus on what God is doing in our lives and, and not so much on what God's doing necessarily in other people's lives, but focus on your life and then your life will be an example for the lives that are around you. There's a rule that they say in the church. They said that 80% of people or 20% of people do all of the work and 80% of people don't hardly do anything. They just come. Is that right? 20%. 80%? I would really like to change that to make it 80% doing everything and 20% is getting saved as they're coming in the door. Amen? Each Sunday, because you're, because you're excited to be in church, how many know that that can be attractive when you're excited to be in church? When you come on a Sunday morning and you're greeting people at the door, even if you're not hired to be the greeter, but you're just so excited to be in church that you're shaking people's hands with a big smile under your mask? <laughs> Did you catch that? I just threw that in there. <laughs> but you're happy to be here, amen? When you woke up this morning, were you excited to get to church? Were you happy to say, Lord, I can't wait to get there to serve you? I just love worshiping and, and the Kunkels worship uh, that they do for us. We're so blessed to have a great worship team that's here faithfully every Sunday. And uh, you know what? They haven't had a break in forever. Okay, when we went to camp. <laughs> but that's, <laughs> that's, that's and if you consider camping a holiday <laughs> it's a lot of work anyway so so we're just we're so appreciative you know what they come and they worship and now that, that worship time should be a time when we can stand together and worship him in unity amen we should just lose ourselves and not be no you know, there, there was a song forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship him Hey, man, I'll leave that to the singers. Forget about yourself. Forget about yourself. Amen? And concentrate on him. You ever notice in the Bible it says, when you pray, pray our Father. Whose Father? Our Father. Everybody's Father. Your Father. My Father. We don't, we don't pray. My Daddy. No, Jesus said pray this way. Our Father who art in heaven. Amen? As one in unity. It's so powerful if we could grasp the understanding that when we come in, we should be coming in with, with being able to share our joy and our excitement about being uh, alive today. To help people uh, get to know Jesus Christ. Because life ends so quickly. Life is so short on this earth. But there's an eternity that's forever. Amen? Amen? And that's why Jesus came and died. Jesus came and died so that we might be one. So that we might be rejoicing with each other with passion and excitement to see other people be attracted. How many people would be attracted to joy and excitement? Don't you think they'd be, you know, they walk in this place and we're all like, oh, hallelujah. You know, just excited to be here. And they can just feel the vibe on their seat that they can hardly sit down because just the joy is so is, is, is just so impressionable. Did you know that when people come to visit the, this church, for instance, or any church, that their first impression is going to help them make a decision to stay or leave? And so how our, how our attitudes are and how our hearts are, if we're in unity and we're all on the same page, and there's nobody trying to get ahead of another person, there's nobody trying to climb up on top of somebody else so they think they can get to the top, because there is no top, but the Father is the top. But the young rich ruler said, you know, what must I do to be good? And he said, there's nobody good but the Father. So don't try to be good. Be saved with Jesus Christ. Amen? Be willing to give up whatever you need to give up to follow Jesus. Because at the end of the road, 
He's the one we'll answer to. Amen? You know, when you look at um, uh, just people, you know, coming in and, and uh, you know, I was just thinking about somebody who just passed away recently, and, and it was sad, and I was talking to somebody that, that knew them very close, and, and I began to ponder that even this morning. I'm, I'm thinking about it, and I'm going, man, this guy gets up, and he's kind of feeling a little bit, you know, uh, like kind of sweaty and like almost like flu symptoms and, you know, a little bit nauseated and thinks, you know what, I'm going to lay down for a minute, and lays down for a little bit, and then gets up and says, honey, I'm just going to go and take the dump, to go to the, uh, the, the dump and, and get rid of some trash and, and, uh, and dies of a heart attack. And that was the last time that she saw him. And I thought, you know, life happens so, life is there and then it's gone. And where you are in eternity is what's really going to matter. Where's your heart in this moment? What are you doing in your life to make a difference in other people's lives? Are you focusing on this world and making this place um, you know, all, your, all of your attention and forgetting about the people that are lost and going to hell? There are a lot of people that need to be saved, amen? And your testimony and, you, and your, uh, the Bible says, you know, th- that you need to be a good example outside these walls. You need to, your, your character, your integrity has got to be up there in ranks to win people, to allow people to see who you really are. Are you real in church and out of church? When we come together, when you're worshiping him, the Bible says that, that uh, he, he talks about, you know, people worship him with their, with their tongues, but their hearts are not worshiping him. You know that scripture? That's Jesus saying, you worship, he's talking to the Pharisees, and he's saying, you worship me with your lips, but your hearts are nowhere near where you need to be. Where are you this morning in your, in your walk with him? Is your heart... When you came in this morning, were you excited about worship starting? Were you excited to meet brothers and sisters in Christ? Where was your heart? When you leave this place, are you, are, are you already pondering, Jesus, help me meet somebody? My dad actually told me a little testimony. I thought it was pretty cool. He said he, you know, he, he, him and mom went to the store in, in Mooseman, and, and, uh, and, uh, and dad just said, you know what? You go in and shop, and I'm just going to walk around the truck and just down here, and, and uh, he said, I really believe Jesus is going to send somebody my way, and I'll be able to witness to them. So that's his focus. He, you know, she's going shopping. He's thinking about Jesus, who he can witness to. Not that she's not thinking about Jesus, but that was his motive was to, I'm going to go with you only for the purpose of maybe I'll meet someone, and I can tell them about Jesus. So he's walking around the truck, and he's going, hello? <laughs> is that my little Jack? He's walking around the truck, and, 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 uh, and he's thinking to himself, I've been here for like 10 minutes, and nobody's coming. Lord, are you sending somebody? And then he felt the prompting of the Holy Spirit saying, go inside. So he thought, well, okay, whatever. I'll go inside and see, see where my mom, where I is. And he walks in, and, and the cashier is, hi, welcome to whatever store. And, uh, and he knew right there, he said, the Holy Spirit spoke to him, talked to her. He said, oh, you, are you new here? And she said, yeah, we, me and my family just moved here. And uh, she said, so we're, just, we're excited to be a part of Mooseman now. He said, well, do you have a church? And she said, no, we've actually been looking for a church. And, and boom, bada bing, bada bang. Done deal. Right? Just like that. Listening to the Holy Spirit. Why? Because when you become unified with Christ, everything in your heart and your thoughts are with Christ. Amen? Your thoughts are, what would Jesus do? On a day like today, you know, you go to the restaurant. Well, maybe not anymore. Um, you used to go to the restaurant. <laughs> did you guys see? That? Did you guys see that picture, of Mr. Mike's? No. Somebody was filming and said, "Here's the staff, and there's lots of room to play." <laughs> there's nobody in the restaurant. Like, it's sad. I'm not mocking. I'm not laughing. I'm, I'm saying that's sad because businesses are hurting. And they're struggling already. And then you see that, and the staff are just down, right? Because they're like, we came to work, and we know that this isn't looking good for our employment. <laughs> right? Anyway, I don't want to get on a negative talk, a topic, but I'm just saying that we go, to the, we go out of these doors this morning, and our focus should be on, Lord, send someone into my life. Send someone into my path every day. 
Amen? Every day, whether it's a phone call, whether it's a whatever. You know, it's interesting because uh, this guy, this testimony I heard of this guy, he's, he said he woke up and he, he thought about this woman that he used to work with. And he said, it's been like three years since he worked with her at this company. And he said, I just, she's been on my heart, he said. So I thought, well, whatever, maybe I'm just thinking of her. And he said, it was like the Holy Spirit wouldn't let it, wouldn't let it go. And it just kept, she kept being on my heart, being on my heart, being on my, so finally he said, I don't even know her number because he said, it's been like three years. So he said, I went to the garage and began to look through old files because we used to have a, a phone list of uh, employees that we could call for different things. And he said, I'm looking for this list. And he said, I can't find it. And all of a sudden, like this, this random number comes into my head, like 73, 20, whatever, blah, 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 right? And he's like, what's that doing in my head? <laughs> you know why? I'm looking for numbers, but there's numbers popping in my head. And he's not putting the two together that the Holy Spirit is leading him to the, the exact number. So he, after a while, he couldn't find the paperwork he's looking for. So he decides, you know what? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to just phone that number. What's the worst that's going to happen? That this, it doesn't, either it's not in service or the person, whatever. So he dials the number, and she answers the phone. And she says, she said, why are you calling me? He said, this might sound crazy to you. He said, what's going on in your life right now? She said, well, to be honest with you, she said, I was just, I, I was just at my brother's house, and I, and I wanted to talk to him about Jesus. And she said, I couldn't because I was so afraid of him rejecting me. He said, you go to her, his house right now. He said, you leave after hanging up and you go to her, his house and, and you tell him all about Jesus. He said, I don't care if you have to scale the building, knock on his window to get into his place, but you get into that place and you tell him about Jesus. And she did that. Spent two hours talking to him and ministering to him about Jesus, and he gave his heart to Jesus Christ. Right? Woo! That's excitement. That's joy. That's being unified with the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine if the church was in, in unity? The body of Christ coming together with one purpose. On Tuesday night, the place is packed out because we're excited about Bible study. We're, we're excited about getting more meat. Right? Sunday morning should be evangelism, stirring the hearts of the people to come to Tuesday night Bible study. Amen? So that you can eat of the word. We can talk about it. We can have dialect and, and just all kinds of discussion. Amen? Hallelujah? This guy comes into the church. All these stories are coming to me this morning. Whew. This guy comes into a church and he says, Pastor, he says, I'm leaving the church. And the pastor's kind of, whoa, Okay. Why are you leaving the church? He says, the whole church is full of gossipers, backbiters, negative, negative people. He said, there's no unity in the house. He said, oh. He said, okay. He said, uh, I understand your concern. He said, I need you to do something, though, before you, before you leave, and, and then you never come back. He said, I want you to take a glass of water. Fill it up. And then he said, I want you to walk around the sanctuary twice. And don't spill any water. And then come and see me. And he says, oh, well, that's weird. But I'll do it. So he goes and he gets a glass of water. He walks around the sanctuary twice. He comes back into the pastor's office. He said, okay, I'm done. He said, how much water did you spill? He said, none. He said, why? He said, because I was focused on the water. He said, there you go. Stop focusing on the people and focus on Jesus. And if you focus on Jesus instead of people, you'll have a whole different result in your walk. <laughs> and you'll find things about people. You go, man, that person's not so bad after all. <laughs> okay, maybe they weren't gossiping about me. Because your focus is on Jesus, and Jesus is going to lead you to the top of your ministry and where you need to go. You can't do what God's called you to do without following him first. Right? Concentrate on him and worship him. And don't worship people. And then they won't let you down. Amen? People can't let you down if you don't worship them and you don't look at the every move they make. Because every one of us have faults. Every one of us have something that's going to irritate someone else. People get irritated by my jokes. That's why I didn't say one. 
No, I was kidding. No one gives you every day my joke. Everyone loves my jokes. I just couldn't think of one. And my, brother, my son-in-law didn't give me one, so. <clears throat> anyway. Amen? Focus on Jesus. I want to go to a psalm in, uh, in this. The psalms are so powerful, and, they're so, and they're so, they speak life to our hearts, and they speak life to everything who we are. Amen? And uh, so in Psalms 47, verses, I think, 1 to 4, I put. Yes, 1 yeah. to 4. So Psalms 47, verses 1 to 4. Let's read that. For the choir director, a psalms of the descendant of Korah. Come, everyone, clap your hands, shout to, the, to God with joyful praise. For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is a great king of all the earth. He subdues the nation before us, putting our em- enemies beneath our feet. He chose the promised land as our inheritance, the proud possession of Jacob's descendants, whom he loves. Amen? Let's read that first part again. For the choir director... Yeah, okay. Just verse, the verse one there. A psalms of the descendant of Korah. Come, everyone, clap your hands, shout to the Lord with a joyful praise. Come, everyone. Amen? Who's everyone? It's everyone. It's everyone. You go, well, Pastor Mark, I'm not really one to clap. And Learn to clap. Learn to not, you know, what, you know what hinders people? And I'm not saying you need, you don't have to do anything that you don't want to do, okay? I'm telling you to look at what the Holy Spirit wants you to do because there are people that'll sit there and literally sit on their hands because they just want to slap them together so hard. But they don't feel they should or they feel embarrassed to do it. I'm telling you that there is power when we come together with one accord and we begin to clap. Hallelujah. There is excitement in your heart the moment that you begin to move your, shuffle your feet a little bit. Get into the little bit of the rhythm of the music. Forget about myself. Concentrate on you. Worship you. Amen. I know how to dance. Do you know what? When I first got saved, that just about got squished out of me. My, the joy that I felt. Because when I got saved, I was like, "Woo! This is, this is wild. I'm feeling a freedom. The Bible says, who the sun sets free is free indeed. If you're free, express yourself in freedom. Why is it that the same people that cannot clap in church can go to a hockey game and blow their lungs out? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> I seen someone the other day, and I'm not gonna say who it was. But anyway, <clears throat> like there's a baseball game on TV, and they're like, "Oh, come on!" Yet in church, they're like, mm-hmm. "Amen." We need to be excited all the time. Outside the church, inside the church, at work. If you're not happy at work, help, ask the Holy Spirit to help you be happy. Maybe, have you ever won someone to Christ? That brings such a joy into your heart like never before. When someone gives their heart to Jesus Christ, there is an excitement in you. When you share the gospel with somebody, there's an excitement in you. It says, come and praise him. Amen? Amen. Praise him. When we're in worship, praise him. Forget about people. Focus on him who gives you life and life more abundantly. See, the enemy comes to kill, rob, and destroy. Is that right? But Christ has come to bring you life and life more abundantly. So don't allow the enemy to rob you of the moment that you have to come into this house and worship the King of Kings with freedom and liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So if you tell me you have the Holy Spirit, then you should have freedom. And coming together with brothers and sisters in Christ, this should be a triumph moment, hallelujah, to the Lamb of God. There should be a a vibration in your heart, a pitter-patter going on. To say, Lord, here I am. 
I'm not saying you have to be a wild man like me. You don't have to have moves like me. Amen? <laughs> ah, Jack, <laughs> he's back. Amen? Let's go to another Psalms. Psalms are great. Psalms 150. Verses 1 to 6. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequaled greatness. Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with the lyre and harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise him with the strings and flutes. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with the loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath sing praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord. If it makes a noise, hammer that thing. Amen? There are so many religious people. Man, it took forever for them to just get an organ in some churches. If they just read the Bible, these are noises in the sanctuary. This is praising the Lord with every kind of instrument. You can, you can put together a couple of spoons. Da, 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 forget about yourself. You can really make it work. When I first was reading that, I, I, I remember thinking back in the day, and it said, uh, come into the sanctuary with, with, and, and musical instrument and lyres. And I'm like, lyres? But it, it was, it's an actual instrument. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, it's apparently a stringed instrument. So anyway, nevertheless, but all these instruments, Jesus wants you to worship with all kinds of musical stuff. Amen? Get on the piano, get on the drums. I remember somebody coming to me one time and saying, we shouldn't have drums in church. It was the same person that said we shouldn't have Christmas trees in church. It was the same person that said we shouldn't do a lot of things in church. Religion will take... Christ out of the church. That's why we don't follow religion, but we follow a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because Jesus says, if you're playing something that makes you feel good, play it. But forget about yourself. So don't do it for yourself. Don't do it for self-glorification, but do it for the glory of the Lord that he has given you the ability to be in harmony with people. I was listening to, I think it was T.D. Jakes one time, and he said, uh, he said, yeah, he said, when I put the choir together, he said, everybody's welcome to sing. He said, I just don't put the mic in, certain, in front of certain people. <laughs> so it blows out that whole, everyone make a joyful noise. <laughs> right? We've had um, people that have sang, and they sound like a cat on a tin roof, a hot tin roof, actually. Right? And that doesn't sound good. Nothing against them. It just doesn't sound good. So honestly, would you not rather someone be honest to you and say, yeah, maybe uh, playing an instrument is for you, not singing. Or maybe you need, just need some singing lessons or whatever. But to just let people do whatever and let them sound like whatever, I don't think that's right, do you? Where people are like, oh, goodness gracious, I could hardly handle it. Maybe sometimes people are like that with me. When I'm preaching real loud in excitement. But the Bible says, come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart. Enter his courts with praise. Amen? So if the Bible says that, should, is, should that not be what we should do? Should we not forget about ourselves and focus on him and go, you know what? I'm going to church today and I'm going to worship the Lord. I'm going to put my hands together. I'm going to begin to clap. We used to have people up here with flags. Grab a flag. Wave it around a little bit. Amen? We should not be afraid to come together as one accord in unity with each other. Don't you agree? The Bible wants us in unity. To be functioning, functioning like a well-oiled machine. Doing everything together to make a difference. When I say we're going to have Bible study, everybody should go, wow, yeah, Bible study. When I say we're going to do a movie night, which we are, Coming up in October here, outside the parking lot here, 
we ordered the coolest thing. <clears throat> it's a huge blow-up screen. <sighs> yeah. Never knew they existed. This thing's like, I think, 20 by whatever. It's a massive blow-up screen. It'll go up against the building. When we go to the park, or to the, when we go to the park, we can use it. When we go to the campground next year, we can use it. You just plug it in, the thing just blows up. We've resurrected a screen. <laughs> Led by the Holy Spirit. Because we said we need a screen that would be easy to move around, portable. This thing just folds up into a case and just carry it around. Isn't that crazy? The things they have today to help us evangelize. And everybody should want to be a part of that. Amen? Everybody should want to help uh, teach the little children with Children's Church. Everybody should want to, some, you know, if you, have, if you can smile without hurting your face, you know, you'd be a great greeter. Some people need to practice it, right? Because Have you ever met those people that haven't smiled in a long time? And I think they put their makeup on and it starts to crack when they let a little grin go. <laughs> Did you know it's easier to smile than it is to frown? So it must take a lot of work to get your face to stay frowned. You know those people that just look scary all the time? People thought that about my wife at one time. They thought she was just mean. But she gets so focused, right? She's just like, just focused. the daycare staff just go, Joanne's coming quick. Smile, look busy. <laughs> so she had to talk, why do you guys seem so, you know, you don't joke around with me? She said, we didn't know we could. <laughs> Because she's so serious looking. <laughs> and trust me, I know. <clears throat> I know when to hold my tongue. <laughs> anyway, hallelujah. Are you happy today? We should be the happiest people on earth. Amen? Psalms 133. What does it say? Psalms 133, verse 1 says, A song for pilgrims ascending to Jerusalem, a psalm of David. How wonderful and pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. Woohoo! In what? In harmony, in unity. Forgetting about ourselves. Because if we're all focusing on Jesus in Sunday morning, we're too busy focusing on Jesus to worry about who's around us. Why was that person wearing those this morning? Why did that person have unmatched clothes? How do I, you know, I, I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt. How long? Did anyone notice? Probably not. I didn't shave either. I'm a slow grower. I'm getting an advancement on November. <laughs> No, I'm going to actually keep it nice and I'm going to try this for a little bit. Oh, Joanna knows what it's like to kiss Milo. <laughs> Milo's our dog, by the way. Anyway, furry, you know. Um, yeah, anyway, so, so in unity, brothers and sisters coming together in unity. Let's go to another scripture in what? I think it's in John, right? 17? Yes, John chapter 17, verses 22 and 23. This is Jesus talking. I have given them the glory you gave me, so they may be one as we are one. I am in them, and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as I love you. I love as much as you love me. This is what Jesus would like. Do we get the picture? That Jesus would like us to be in unity. He gave you and I the same Holy Spirit. He said, I'm going to go to the Father because I must send the Advocate, which is the Holy Spirit, that will lead you and me in all truth. Amen? That will lead us into all truth. That that same Holy Spirit that's in you is in me and everybody that's accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Why do we all need the same Holy Spirit? So we can be unified. The enemy comes to kill, rob, and destroy and bring division. In our lives, in the churches. All we need to do is believe in Jesus Christ. Amen? Ask him into our lives and then we should be in unity with one heart. 
to serve the Lord with one desire. What is your desire? When you go to church, what are you hearing? When you listen to stuff online, what are you listening to? Is it, is it teaching the same thing, the Bible? Somebody asked me one day, they said, what does your church believe? I said, the Bible. Well, are you guys born again? Does the Bible talk about being born again? Then we're born again. Well, do you believe in the tongues? Does the Bible talk about the tongues? Then we believe in the tongues. Hallelujah. We believe in the Bible. Stop trying to take stuff out of the Bible and stay unified. Isn't that right? Because when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, He will lead you into all truth. He will teach you to praise Him. He will help you to be excited. He will be excited in you and through you. Amen? We should be the happiest people on earth if we could just forget about the people around us and concentrate on Him and worship Him. What is my part in the body of Christ? Where does God want me in this body? The time is short. We're not on this earth much longer. What are you doing for the kingdom? When you get to heaven, what's Jesus going to say to you? And like I said earlier, a guy goes to the, the dump one day to get rid of some garbage and doesn't come home and ever see his wife again. What was the last thing that was talked about? Do you have a relationship with your family? Do they know that you love Jesus? Help them. You've been given the Holy Spirit, the advocate, to lead you, to guide you, to help you come up with words that you need to say. Amen? We need to follow Jesus. That's why he says, Father, I want them to have unity as we have unity. Amen? It's interesting because the scripture that talks about when Jesus was at the table with the disciples and he said, uh, he said, one of you are going to betray me today. You know that scripture? It says, one of you are going to betray me today. And they all look at each other and go, looked at the Lord and says, is it me, Lord? The other one says, is it me, Lord? Are you asking yourself today, Lord, am I doing everything I can do for you? What am I doing for you, Lord? I don't want to betray you. I want to be in unity with you. Do you want to be in unity with the Lord? Do you want to follow what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do? Or do you want to do what you want to do? Because it's all about you. Let's go to Joshua. I think that's the next one, right? No, next one is Mark 10. Oh, yeah. Let's go to Mark 10. Mark 10, verse 6 to 9. But God made them male and female from the beginning of creation. This explains why man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. Since they are no longer two but one, let no one split apart what God has joined together. Amen? Right from the beginning, God said, I'm going to make man and woman, they're going to produce, but they're going to be unified. Do you understand how important it is that a husband and wife is unified? That they're in unity, that they, that they understand their roles in life, that they can work together? It's like the church body. We're married to each other in a sense, because we all have the same Holy Spirit, right? So we should be able to function with unity, because if we, do, if we go to do something, it should be a leading of the Holy Spirit, and we should feel good about it. Amen? We shouldn't have to go, oh, I don't know why that guy keeps doing it, you know? No, no. If the Holy Spirit's leading it, and you know that person's character, come on. Forget about yourself and what you do, and let that person be that person. Amen? But when two have come together, they become one for a purpose. And that's why the enemy drives so hard to kill, rob, and destroy families. He attacks the husband and the wife, which divides the children and the husband and the wife, which divides the church. There was a church that we were in Nova Scotia, and the pastor's son ended up having an affair within the church, caused the pastor to have to step down, which caused the family to separate and make division, and the church separated, and there was a division. How quickly the enemy works 
through lust, through whatever he can do to bring division, he is always strategizing on how to divide because he's not a team player. We learned that when he got thrown out of heaven, he thought he could overthrow God, the Father, amen? And God kicked him and a third of the angels out of heaven because they weren't being unified. Unity is so important, it's all over the Bible. Every army, every war, the soldiers were together, marching together. Let me ask you something. Those soldiers marching together, were they focusing on themselves or focusing on the cause? They were focusing on the cause. What is your cause and what are you doing for the kingdom of God as a born-again believer? Tell me you're born again and then tell me what you're doing for the kingdom. Tell me what Jesus is speaking to your heart when you woke up this morning. Hallelujah. Let's go to Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods of your ancestors serve beyond the Euphrates, or will you be the or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now? But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. So choose now who you're going to serve, right? He says, but for me and my household, we, unity, we, we the body of Christ, we the, we, we the, me and my household, we will serve the Lord. This body will serve the Lord, and we will do it together, and we will fight the enemy back together. We will do whatever we need to do together to fight this war that we're in right now. Because we are living in the end days when the enemy is up and he's attacking the churches all over the world. He's attacking the churches. He's attacking families. There is division everywhere. And we have the power because we have the key. We have the Holy Spirit who leads us into all truth. So today, make a decision on whom you are serving. Are you serving the gods of the world? Or are you serving the gods, the God of heaven? Amen? Who will be your king today? For me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And for me and this house, we will serve the Lord. Amen? And we will fight with the heart of the Lord. I love the scripture says the battle is the Lord's. He that is in me is greater than he that's in the world. If we just listen to he, the Holy Spirit. There's debates about, well, there's no gender. He, the Holy Spirit, which means a, he, a man, amen, or he. There's nothing against women. Amen. It's just, don't try to make a, a doctrine out of something that doesn't need to be a doctrine. Focus. Forget about yourself. <laughs> Forget about what you want. Focus on what he wants. He wants to see you moving in the shaking. Praying for people. The Bible says that when you get saved, you'll go into all the world and you'll preach the gospel, lay your hands on the sick, and the sick will be healed. He doesn't say just some people. He says all people that are born. Who can give their hearts to Christ? Anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. In the moment that you're saved, the Holy Ghost comes to live inside of you and empower you to be a witness. Amen? What's my next scripture? Numbers 11, 16 I'm going to paraphrase for time. Numbers 11, uh, verses 16, 17, talks about Moses, and, uh, and God says to Moses, he said, Moses, he said, it can't be all about you, my friend. I need you to go get the 12 uh, elders or leaders of your tribes, and he said, I'm going to give them the same spirit that's on you. I'm going to take the spirit off of you. I'm going to take a little bit of the spirit off of you and divide it amongst the 12 so that you don't have to do all the work and be under such pressure, but I'm going to divide it amongst you. Why? So that you can relax a little bit. That's why he's given us the body of Christ. That's why he gave us the church. It's not for the pastor to do everything. It's not for the wife's the pastor's wife. In some churches growing up, the pastor's wife, the pastor did the preaching, he did the bulletins, he did the vacuuming, he did the cleaning, the wife played the piano, did the singing. 
And there are churches to this day that will say, we pay you to do that. Forget about yourself. Concentrate on him. Amen? No, no. Unity is the body of Christ coming together to function, to do the work of the ministry together. Every one of us should have a part. We're all members of the body. If you can't figure out how to worship here, how are you going to worship in heaven? Somebody keeps talking about the big feast we're going to have, so i got a head start. <laughs> Figuring how am I going to eat like that in heaven in that big feast if I don't start now? So I'm expanding my territory. <clears throat> like one pastor said, he said, I lost so much weight, I handed my, sh my shirts and to evangelists, and they're using that for tent meetings. <laughs> <laughs> It's a big boy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's go to a couple more scriptures real quick. I think it was Acts, right? Acts 2, yeah. 1 to 3. So we know this one. We're talking about the day of Pentecost. What were they doing on the day of Pentecost? When they, remember, there was 500 at one time, and now there's 120. And they went to the upper room to what? To cry? They went to the upper room to pray, and they were all in what? In one accord, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, 3, whatever, it talks about them being in the upper room in one accord. So can you picture that? Sometimes on Tuesdays I get so excited because I think, oh, we're all in one accord right here. Because sometimes in the church on Sunday morning, we might not be in one accord because there's some people that are here for spectators. They're here as spectators and not participators. And they're not forgetting about themselves. They're concentrating on you and not the Lord. And that's bad. Amen? The day of Pentecost was a time when all of a sudden there was a sound like a wind. And the place just shook. It was so loud that the whole community, the whole city heard it. Let me tell you something. The Bible says, suddenly there was a wind. A sound of a mighty rushing wind. And like tongues of fire appeared on people's heads. Because they were in unity. See, God had to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And in order for him to continue to pour out his spirit on all flesh, he needs to empower the people. So he empowered those people of 120. And then those 120 went out. And then it says in, in uh, Acts chapter 2, 16, 17, it talks about that Peter and, uh, and, and Peter's standing there amongst all the people. And it says him and the 11. Why was it him and the 11? Because they were in unity with each other. They were standing against it. These people are not drunk as you suppose. But it is the hour of the Holy Spirit being poured out. The 11 were there with Peter, which is 12. The 12 disciples were there in unity as one. They separated themselves just in that moment. And I would imagine that the rest of the 120 or whatever the math is with 11, 12 taken out of 120. Uh, 101? 19? Uh, okay. Anyway, huh? 108? Okay, anyway, it doesn't matter. You get my gift? You get my rift? That 120 were in the upper room. And the Holy Spirit came, baptizing them with the Holy Spirit and fire. That's why I don't get it, you know, and I'm not, I'm not here to talk about other churches or whatever, but how do you stop a move of God when there's 120 with tongues of fire on their heads and they just go out and they begin to spread the gospel. 3,000 came to the church in one day right after that moment. 3,000 came. 3,000 came to the Lord that day. How do you stop the move and the fire of God from that day? It never died. It says, well, the gifts died with the disciples. Now, how could it possibly die with the disciples? 3,000 received the Holy Spirit that day. Plus 120. Amen? The power of God, when it's poured out, it doesn't, you can't quench, stop the Holy Spirit. So when we talk about Azusa Street, that's just an off run. When we talk about Smith Wigglesworth or Johnny Lake, 
They're all filled with the same Holy Spirit from the day of Pentecost. The same Spirit that rose Christ from the dead is in you today. Hallelujah. Let's stand together and give the Lord a shout of praise in this house. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Let's give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you. Open up your mouths and say, Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo! Come on. Hallelujah. There's a scripture. Uh, I'm not going to go anymore. We're going to take communion right now. We're going we're gonna to share in the emblems. But there is a scripture in Acts, uh, in the Acts, the 19th chapter, I think it is. And it talks about a, 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 a female goddess that they were worshiping, an idol. And they were creating this idol. And, and uh, it says that, it says that they, they chanted and they roared for two hours, it says. Two hours praising this God. Can you imagine shouting and praising for two hours about a false God? And we can't even go three minutes for a real God that has a real life and he lives inside of you. But a false God, they were able to, the whole city was just shouting. And I think that's why you can go to a football game, hockey game, baseball game, a worldly concert, or even a Christian concert, and shout, and scream. And you talk to some people the next day, they say, yeah, I can't even talk. I got a little excited at the football game the other day. Like completely blown out their voice, shouting for a football, a piece of pig skin. And yet we can't shout for Jesus in church. Let's forget about ourselves and concentrate on him who is perfect. Amen? Let's uh, take communion together. I don't even know where it is. Is it over here? Just get up. Keep social distance if you can and help yourself to the communion back there. Grab an emblem and let's, let's uh, have communion together. I won't hold you much longer. I just want you to just take this moment as you do that and just go ahead and start taking it. But as you do that, I want you to think about your life and how are you serving the Lord today? And the Bible says, make sure you check yourself. Check yourself before you uh, take these emblems. And I'm not saying you have, there's nobody here perfect. Jesus himself said, there's nobody good but the Father. But the Holy Spirit works in your life and makes you free. And he makes you free because your desire is to be free. If your desire is not to be free, then you'll just stay in bondage. But if you desire freedom today, the Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And if you've asked Jesus Christ into your heart this morning, if you said, Lord, come into my life and forgive me of my sins, I receive what you did on Calvary, if you did that this morning, welcome to the kingdom. Welcome to the family of God. If you've been backslidden or maybe you've just been away from church for a long time and maybe you just need to say, Lord, forgive me for my, my slip-ups and forgive me for my, my downsides and just help me, Lord. Help me to overcome my problems that I have. You know what? He says you have not because you ask not. So ask him today. Say, Lord, I want to take communion this morning and this is your blood and this is your body. It's been, your blood was shed for my healing and for my, my life. Your body was broken and, and, and ripped apart so that mine could be whole. Lord, I receive that today. I thank you for doing that, for being the sacrifice for this congregation in this world. Aren't you glad we have grace? Jesus said grace is there so that when you do things wrong, you can repent because grace is there. And now you've, when you repent, you're forgiven. So don't worry about what you've done. Don't say, I'm not good enough. No, no, you're good. You're as good as they can get because there's nobody good but the Father. You just have to have believe in grace and say, Lord, forgive me. So be forgiven today.
Thank you, Jesus. Has everybody got? Thank you so much for coming, you guys. I'm so blessed to be able to come and be free and come in a short sleeve shirt and not get judged. I don't wear a tie. Ties, they seem to tie me up a little bit. It's kind of like a pulpit. Years ago, I said, I can't, even if I could read out of a book, I, I, I can't do pulpits. I just, I feel restricted. I need that freedom to be able to move around. I need to be able to dance and not hit things. Amen? So thanks for coming and, and being a part of what we're doing this morning. And, and thanks for receiving this communion that, that's being offered up. Because we honor the Lord in this. Jesus said to the disciples that day, he sat at the table. He said, he, he took the bread and he broke it. Then he said, hey guys, he said, Here's the, this is the body of Christ. This is my body that's going to be ripped apart and broken for you. I want you to take this in remembrance of what I did for you. In remembrance that I died so that you could live and have eternity. I died so that your, my body would be ripped apart, but your body would be whole. That you would produce and live a life of joy. And Jesus said, he said, I want you to take this bread. And he broke it. And he gave each one of his disciples, each one of his people, a piece. And they ate it in remembrance of him. Let's eat this today together. Lord, I thank you so much. I thank you so much for the body. I thank you for your sacrifice so that we could have our lives, so that we could not just live today, but live forever in eternity with you. Thank you for allowing us to be free. And then Jesus picked up the cup and he said, this cup represents my blood this is a cup of suffering. As my blood is being poured out for you, it's being poured out for your freedom. It's being poured out for your healing. Because he said, by my stripes, you are healed. That my blood washes you clean as white as snow. So when the devil lies to you and says, yeah, you're not really free, you can say, by the blood of Christ, I am free, because who the Son sets free is free indeed. So take a hike and fall on a spike. <laughs> Tell that devil just to run, because you're going to kick him in the behind. Amen? Jesus said, this is, my this is my blood. This is the cup of suffering. I'm going to go, and I want you to take it in remembrance of me. Every time you do, remember what he did for you. Let's take and drink together. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Lord God, I thank you so much for each and every person that came out this morning. And those that are listening on YouTube later, Lord, I thank you for them. I ask that the Holy Spirit would visit their homes. I ask that the Holy Spirit would visit each and every house here today, that after today that we would never be the same, but we would forget about ourselves and concentrate on you and worship you, Lord. That our hearts would be lined up with your heart. That what breaks your heart, Lord, would break our heart. Lord, that we would take the Great Commission to heart and we go into all the world and preach the gospel and tell people about you, Lord so that they too will have an eternity in heaven. Lord, I ask and I anoint, and I ask that you just anoint each and every person right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a shout of praise in the house. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We give you the praise, glory, and the honor for all that you've done, all that you're going to do, and all that you continue to do in and through us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Woo. Bless you and have a wonderful Sunday and make sure you greet somebody on the way out this morning.